Welcome to the MyPAR tutorial on generating measurements from a single image in the image processor. To begin, we'll open up the image processor and let's open the same image that we've been working with in other tutorials, namely the creating a recipe and setting layers tutorials. Please view those if you haven't and are interested as they will help you follow along in this tutorial. We're going to load in our recipe that we've made. Now what I'm going to show you here today is how to make global measurements and feature measurements. So what I forgot to do is resave the recipe with layers after I made layers in the layers tutorial. So let me do that quickly. Let me set layers here. And I'm going to set one layer to be the larger features. I'm going to make this green just for consistency. I'm going to call this secondary features. These are secondary precipitates. And then this um, step that found the smaller features. I'm going to add and make that red. And these are tertiary. So I've set up my two layers. Look at stars. This is a layer and it's tertiary. This is a layer and it's secondary. So now that really isn't going to affect my experience in the image processor, but it's going to tell the batch processor if I run this as a batch where to do the images. Again, if you don't have layers, or where to do the measurements, I'm sorry, if you don't have layers, the measurements get performed on the last state in the recipe when this is run as a batch. When it's when a measurement is run in the image processor, of course, it's run on whatever image you're looking at. So be aware of that. If I'm looking at this image, that's what, I, what my measurement gets run on. But when this recipe is executed automatically as part of a batch process, if you have layers, measurements will occur on each of the layers and be saved in the spreadsheet that way. If you don't have layers, measurements will occur on the last state of the recipe. So we have layers in this case. So we're all set for measuring area fraction, which I'll show you where we want to measure area fraction. We want to measure the area fraction of the smaller ones and the area fraction of the larger ones. So I'm just going to add area fraction by counting pixels as a step to the recipe. So it tells me the area fraction of what I'm looking at is 0.44 or 44 percent and it gets added as a step to the recipe. So now I'm going to save this recipe find secondary plus tertiary with layers with measurements. If I want to see right now what the area fraction of the smaller ones is, I'm just going to select that step so I'm looking at it and just hit perform. It tells me 0.019, so 2% of the image are these smaller features. 44% are the larger ones. And again, with the recipe set up like this, if I ran this image, this recipe on 100 images, um, I would get two measurement spreadsheets. One would be the area fraction of the smaller features for all 100 images, and one would be the area fraction of the larger features for all 100 images. And that's really all there is for these global measurements. Now feature measurements don't get added to the recipe. You can perform those in the image processor on an image by image basis. If you want to perform those automatically on a set of 100 or 200 images, that would take place in the process image editor and we'll show you that in the generating measurements tutorial um, for the process image editor. But I want to show you how to make feature measurements in the image processor 
uh, so that I can then show you how to color features, uh, excuse me, color features according to measurements in the next tutorial here. So all I'm going to do, I want to measure the average size of all of these larger features. And I'm going to use a simple metric called the equivalent diameter, which just says take the area of every feature and say how big would a circle be if it had that same area. There are other more advanced ways of measuring size, uh, although size itself is somewhat of a crudely defined metric and really loses its meaning if you're not talking about circles, but we can have that conversation another time. Let's just measure the equivalent diameter of every feature uh, for the purpose of this demo. So if I want its diameter in something other than pixels, I need to calibrate the magnification of the image. And I can do that by having an image taken at the same magnification and pixel resolution as the one I'm looking at here, unless there is a distance on this very image that I know for certain, which I don't. There's no micron bar or scale bar on here. Um, so I'm going to open up by hitting calibrate. I'll show you. You're prompted to open an image that has preferably something with a known distance. So if I go back, I believe this image, also taken at the same mag and the same uh, pixel resolution, has a micron bar on it. So now I'm placed into my calibrate magnification tool. So I'm just going to zoom in on the area with the micron bar. And I'm just going to do step one here to make a distance line. I'm going to place that distance line over the known distance. I'm going to say that distance is one micron. Calculate the calibration factor. Accept. So now I've calibrated the image. I know that every um, pixel is 0 0.003 microns, or 3 nanometers in size. I can save this as a file if I'd like. So I might just call this cal20kx. So now if I wipe this out for some reason, and I need to recall it, and I don't have that number memorized, if I just hit load and pick that file, it's loaded in. And it's also part of the recipe. So if I saved the recipe again, this recipe now would have this factor built into it. That can be uh, convenient at times, but also be aware that when you're loading the recipe, it might come with a calibration factor. So look up here um, and make sure it's the one that you want. So now that the mag is calibrated, measurements would be expressed in units of microns instead of pixels. So let me generate some measurements. I'm going to click on measurements. I'm going to say I want to measure equivalent diameter. And I'm going to set a place to save these. Inside here is okay. I'm just going to say uh, measurements equivalent diameter and click generate and now it's spitting out the equivalent diameter of every feature in the image that I'm looking at. Close this and now let me go in here this into Excel so we can take a look at what it reported. So I have feature number and its equivalent diameter in units of microns. Now what we can do to better visualize this data, if you wanted to simply make a histogram of all of the equivalent diameters, you can do that in any software that you'd like. If you'd like to uh, report the average equivalent diameter for the image, just average this column up. Uh, but if you'd like to color features now based on their measurements, please tune in to the next tutorial and we'll go over that process.
Thanks again for tuning in, and I hope to see you in the next one.